All right, good morning everybody and welcome back to the Blue Ridge Wildlife Center for another of our live classroom series. Uh, today we are going to be speaking about different tracks and signs that animals might leave in your backyard. Um, this is a great activity for all of you that are staying at home, especially with the, the weather that we've had, the rain, there's a lot of uh, hopefully some muddy spots out there where animals might leave uh, these tracks behind that you can go out afterwards and take a look around and see uh, who's been in your backyard? Uh, a lot of animals, uh, they make their way uh, in and around these areas without you seeing. They do a lot of that uh, overnight uh, or when there's no people around. So this is a great way for you to go out afterwards and kind of see how many clues you can uh, find of the animals that have been uh, in your backyard for the, for the last little bit. So we are going to try something new today. Uh, you'll notice behind me I have our, uh, our TV screen up. We have a PowerPoint presentation of sorts of big pictures of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about. I'm not sure how well that's going to translate uh, across to your screens at home, but I hope you're able to uh, to see some of it, kind of understand what's going on. If you have any questions or issues, please feel free to ask. We have our lovely cameraman Keith at a safe distance away, uh, and he'll be asking questions uh, that you guys ask of me uh, so that we can keep this process rolling. So uh, animals leave marks in, in very different ways. Uh, obviously the most, uh, the most common that people think of are, uh, are tracks, but they, they leave other signs behind. Some are unintentional, uh, some are intentional. So the unintentional ones, they're just going about their daily lives and they leave these tracks behind, uh, these signs behind, and other things they do specifically for a reason, to let other animals in the area know uh, certain information about them. So uh, the unintentional ones, uh, these are things that uh, we see, or sorry, we'll go back, the intentional ones, uh, you'll see, go to, uh, so it's calling, so making those, uh, those animal calls, bird songs, things like that, they're letting animals specifically know something, this is my territory, uh, I found really good food, whatever it is, there's a predator in the area, there's a message that they're, they're trying to relay. We also have uh, scent marking or leaving scat as a territorial mark uh, or uh, even sometimes rubbing on trees to leave territorial marks. So it's usually all about uh, territory, but they leave these signs behind as a communication tool uh, to let other animals know. But they're still really cool for us to see. We're going to talk mostly about the unintentional uh, ways that they leave uh, signs behind. A big one are uh, sheds. Uh, skins, feather, fur, uh, whether something happened, they got into a fight, or this snake skin that we see up in the top corner there, uh, he just shed, left that behind, he doesn't need it anymore. Other ways that they leave uh, unintentional things are browsing, or deer eating, you can see evidence, anybody who has uh, plants in their yard, obviously deer like to come by, uh, eat those, and you can find evidence of that browsing uh, by the, the buds and things that have been nipped off. Um, also homes that they leave behind or that you can see from a distance. Uh, one of the easiest ones to see uh, right in the, uh, in the fall and early spring are the squirrel trays, which is uh, what we're showing here down in the bottom corner. Uh, that's a squirrel nest, so it's usually just a big bundle of grass and leaves and way in the middle uh, is their, their sleeping spot. They'll actually have their babies in this nest as well, so these are, uh, these are big things that you can see, just a big bundle of leaves in the crook of a tree. Uh, you can see them very well if you look for them. Uh, they may be occupied, they may be not, but they're still really cool to look at. And the big one we're going to talk about today are animal tracks or prints. Uh, so those are the ones that they leave just by walking around. Uh, and they don't really mean much to the animals, but they're really cool for us to look at and kind of uh, see who, uh, who we have living with us. So uh, one of the, there's different, there's different ways that animals uh, walk around. The, the big one that you guys might know is something called plantigrade, and that's when you're putting your whole foot uh, on the ground like people do. So you can see the toes, you can see the front part of the foot, you can see, see the heel of the foot. So the entire footprint, boom, on the ground. Uh, so that's plantigrade. Uh, then we have digitigrade, which is when you're just talking, uh, walking on your fingertips. Birds do this. Um, so these are, these are some bird tracks here uh, in the sand. So they're walking up on their, on their tippy toes uh, and no part of uh, the ball or the heel of the, uh, the foot is showing. Uh, and the last one uh, is called ungulate and that's uh, technically taught walking on your toenails. Uh, and this is special to animals with hooves uh, since their hooves are elongated toenails. So they're not walking on actually any part of the foot, they're walking on their very, very tippy toes. Um, so that's kind of unique to them. And there's different patterns 
that they leave behind. Uh, one of the, the main ones is called zigzag. This is made by animals like humans, or this track bears. Uh, and these are left behind when the, uh, the long legs of the animal make the, the front, foot put, front print land near the back print and the back print land near the front print. Uh, print. This is really good for uh, conserving energy. Uh, so larger animals with long legs uh, use this one uh, a lot. Got a lot of uh, space to cover, especially when you're a bear looking for a lot of food. Um, so you want to have a nice, easy pace while you go. You don't want to tire yourself out. The other group that you might see are called hoppers. Um, these are things like rabbits or squirrels. They have much longer back legs than they have front legs. So as they're jumping, their powerful back legs actually land those prints in front of their front prints. So uh, on your guys' right hand side, you'll see this is a squirrel print. You can see two smaller prints, that's the front prints, and the back print landing in front of those. And on the other side, we have rabbits. Same thing. So we are, they're putting their front feet down and their back feet are landing afterwards. Uh, we also have uh, bounders. Couldn't find a, a really nice picture of that. Um, but those would be like running dogs where they're having, you're seeing alternate prints, back feet, and then you see the front feet, and then you see the back feet. Uh, and waddlers, and these are things like insects or lizards that are, when they're low legs, cause body parts to drag. So, so you'll see a trail in between those prints uh, where they're dragging either their belly or their tail behind them. You'll see that um, in, the, uh, in the trail. So tracks and signs, they, uh, tracks especially, they tell us a lot about an animal. Obviously size is really important. Um, in this picture, we're looking at a, uh, a comparison between fox prints and dog prints. So it can tell you the size of the animal. Um, obviously they look very similar. They have difference, uh, differences, but they're very similar. Four toes, the, uh, the ball of the foot, uh, but definitely a difference in size. Uh, so that's important. Knowing uh, what size the animal is will help you determine maybe what kind of animal made that. Was it a fox in your backyard? Was it your neighbor's dog? You can kind of uh, take a guess to find out those things. Uh, they also can tell you how heavy an animal is. Heavier animals live, uh, leave deeper prints in the mud uh, for, uh, for you to see. So lighter animals uh, might leave lighter prints or harder to see prints and big heavy animals like the bear we saw earlier, that's gonna leave some big prints behind. It can also tell you some other behavioral things. Is this animal alone? Does it have a lot of friends? This is a lot of, uh, these are turkey tracks um, made in, in the snow. Um, and you can see there's a lot of turkeys there. Uh, so turkeys generally travel in flocks. Um, so you're not just going to see one line of prints, you're going to see uh, a whole bunch of prints uh, mixed in there. So having, uh, having that information uh, will tell you a little bit about the animal's uh, behavior. How many, how many are you looking for? Obviously you might not be able to tell. One turkey may leave lots of, uh, lots of these tracks, uh, but one turkey definitely can't leave all of these tracks. So he's traveling in more than one, uh, more than one group. Uh, it can also tell you information about their behavior. These tracks are really well made, so these animals are calm. They're walking around, they're doing their own thing, uh, and they don't have any cares in the world. Prints that are smudged, maybe made in a hurry, these animals might be running, maybe they're running away from something, maybe they're running to something, maybe they're just having fun. Uh, but you can kind of even get an idea of these animals' behavior uh, from looking at their prints. Uh, it can also tell you about natural history. So both of these are bird prints, um, but if you guys look at the one on your right, um, you can see that there's some evidence in between the toes. These, this is webbing. Um, so these are duck prints. Uh, so these are aquatic, uh, aquatic prints, both bird prints, both aquatic birds. Uh, but the ducks, you can tell that webbing in between, which is really cool, which would show up. Um, and then on the other side, we have herring prints. So you can see those toes. Um, they're still made in and around water, uh, but no webbing. So two different bird prints, but showing uh, the different natural history of those animals. Uh, and that can be important. What kind of animals do you think you might have in your backyard? Do you have water nearby? You might have ducks. Uh, if you don't have any water, uh, you probably don't have ducks, and you can kind of decide that uh, based on, on the prints that you see. Uh, and there's other, uh, other signs as well. Um, so other signs that they leave behind, scat uh, is a big one. Um, so those would be uh, uh, 
droppings that are left behind. And those, those things you can, uh, it tells you a lot about the animal, it tells you herbivore or carnivore, it can tell you what the animal's eating, uh, and you can even use it to kind of tell what kind uh, of animal is in your backyard. There's a lot of resources out there um, for, uh, for information like that. Uh, other things that they leave behind uh, are, are rubbings and chew marks. Uh, so if you guys look at the, uh, the tree in that picture, um, this is from damage from, uh, from deer. So their antlers, as they, uh, as they grow during the spring, uh, their antlers have uh, a velvety covering to them. And as they, they grow hard, uh, they rub that velvet off. And they do a lot of this damage unintentionally. They're not making any remarks based on the tree or their territory, um, but they're using it to rub that velvet off so that their antlers are nice and strong uh, for the breeding season. So they're making sure they have that and they're ready, uh, ready to go. So you see a lot of this damage uh, from other sides. Uh, the other picture down there is an antler uh, as well, and it has a lot of chew marks on it. Um, so this is uh, another sign that animals have been there. Animals regularly chew uh, on bones and things, not only for food, but a lot of rodents, like squirrels, will chew on antlers for a couple of reasons. Um, they get uh, calcium from it, uh, and it also helps wear their teeth down. So that's an important uh, behavioral thing for them. So you can kind of look for that damage uh, on, uh, on bones. We actually have uh, somebody brought us uh, an antler as well uh, that has a lot of that damage on it. So you can see that they were very, uh, they worked on this a lot uh, to get, like I said, the, the calcium that they need uh, as well as helping wear their teeth down. So double, uh, double benefit there. Um, other things that you're looking for, we talked about homes. Uh, so some of them are, are hard to tell. Big pile of logs. You guys think that is the beaver dam or a, a lodge uh, on the beaver dam? Um, really cool. If you guys have a chance, the largest beaver dam in the world is in Canada. Let's take a look. Uh, look it up on the internet. Uh, the internet. Have your parents help you. Uh, it's really cool to see. You can actually see satellite pictures of it. It is so long. Uh, it's caused a whole new wetland right in the middle of this forest. It's really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, so it might not look like much to you, but other animals would know what this is, uh, and they have a reason for doing this. Uh, so that's always something you can see, uh, but maybe not know what it is. Uh, the other one, this uh, flattened area of grass, if anybody's seen that, uh, that is actually a deer bed or deer nest. Uh, so deer uh, do, excuse me, uh, my computer's gonna, gonna go to sleep. Um, so deer do leave uh, um, spaces like this. They find uh, places to sleep overnight, tall grass to keep themselves hidden. So you'll see flattened areas like this um, that they've used to kind of uh, hide themselves but stay comfortable. Um, the other one may look, I always thought that this meant there was something wrong with the tree. Um, this is called a gall or an insect gall and they are um, uh, protective cocoons that some insects make. Uh, on, on plants and things to protect either themselves or their babies. So these are some other odd things uh, that you might be able to see when you're out and about. So you may not see the big, uh, the big things that we talked about. Look for little things as well. Uh, you never know uh, who you might find. And no questions from you guys? All right. Well, I think we might find it short. All right. So we have uh, a craft for you guys to do at home for all of you uh, waiting uh, for the weather to get better to be able to go out and about and have a good time. You can make your own tracks at home. Um, so it's really easy to make. Um, sponges work well. And you can use uh, tracks that you download from, uh, from online, find some really nice tracks. Trace them out on your sponges, cut them out, and you can glue them uh, to uh, cardboard or to plastic to kind of make uh, make these uh, your do-at-home stamps, your do-it-yourself stamps, uh, to make your own tracks and prints. Um, fun, you can make them life-size. If you guys have big enough sponges uh, or your parents can help you, you can have tracks that are different sizes. Uh, and again, make sure you follow the rules that we talked about in the beginning uh, about having either the toe showing, the whole foot showing, or just the tippy toes. 
that's all I have for you guys. I went through that a little fast. Um, you guys have any questions at all about um, tracks or signs or animals that you might be looking for? Give it a minute. All right. Well, I, I apologize for that, but thank you guys so much for joining us, and I hope to see you guys on Friday.